Okay. Um, today I'm going to make a video about the Zodiac Pillar. Um, and it'll be mostly about Edward Wayne Edwards, who I am quite sure was the Zodiac Pillar for reasons that will become clear. I've actually made a little plan on um, what I'm intending to go through. Um, I'm actually currently locked down due to COVID because my wife has uh, someone, a child at her work place has tested positive. So we're going to be locked down for the next week or so. Um, so I thought I would make a video. Okay. Um, it's going to be mostly about the Zodiac Killer, but it might touch on Scott Peterson because there are clues that interlock with different cases, Scott Peterson and also the Black Dahlia. Um, Elizabeth Short in 1947, and it's hard to, um, because it's all one big puzzle, if you just look at one corner of the puzzle, as it were, it, you can't quite explain all the, all the connections and clues that link together. Um, Edwards made it as a single large puzzle, I think is, is fair to say. And we don't even, ex I don't even understand some parts of the puzzle yet because it's clear the puzzle was bigger than um, what I've understood so far fully. There's just sort of hints and clues in places. Anyway, let's get started. Um, okay, so first of all, let's just have a quick look at the Zodiac Killer. I said I was going to look at Wikipedia, so. Um, let's put in Zodiac Killer um, and have a very brief scroll through that article, which is is a, is a perfectly good factual article on Wikipedia about the Zodiac Killer. Um, there were five victims who, who were agreed that everyone agrees that these were the Zodiac victims. Five people killed. Um, there were also two men who survived. Here we are. So Zodiac murdered five known victims. Um, it was in um, two survivors. Um, and there were four separate attacks, Lake Herman, Blue Rock Springs, Lake Berryessa, and finally the Presidio Heights murder. Um, uh, and the first attack there were two people killed the others there was one person killed and these two there was there was a survivor in each of these two and the final height Presidio Heights was uh, just one person killed um, and I'm not going to go through it in enormous detail um, because you can you can read about it here these are the victims um, Michael McGough was a s survivor and Brian Hartnell was also a survivor. Um, the other five people were in the attacks were killed. Okay, um, and the other thing to understand is that the attacks, the first attack was December 1968, then there was roughly six, seven months until July 1969, there was the second attack, then September 1969, and then finally Presidio Heights, October 1969. Um, and the other thing to perhaps say about this is that the first two attacks were quite similar in nature. They were both um, just shootings. Um, of, of, of people who parked at the side of the road. Um, the third attack was a, a bit different because the attacker was, it was very theatrical. The attacker had a, a Zodiac hood on um, and um, that's maybe around the time things got really crazy. 
because up to then, well, after the second attack, it was claimed by the same person. Um, that was on the, the day afterwards. Um, someone cl called in to claim responsibility and take credit, and and it linked and linked it with the the early attack, six months earlier, six and a half months earlier. Um, so I suppose things got a little really got crazy because the attacker had this strange costume on. And then finally you've got the Presidio Heights murder, which was really completely different again. Um, it, a cab driver was killed, but it was linked because the, uh, the attacker started writing letters and including um, uh, part of a bloody shirt that was recovered from the victim, that he had taken from the victim. Um, it's here. There was, there was another letter. There was a letter here on October the 14th, 1969, containing a swatch of Paul Stein's shirt as proof he was the killer. So there was, there was sort of no doubt whatsoever that the, this, this letter was from the killer, or if it was a group of people from the killers. Um, there's always been a very widespread assumption that the Zodiac killer was a single person, and I do believe that's true in, to some extent in that I do believe Edwards did all the killings, but it would be a mistake to think that Edwards was a lone killer. Um, he was operating as a hitman for organised crime, um, so he wasn't a typical serial killer operating on his own. He was a hitman, and whether you even call a hitman a serial killer is a matter of terminology. Um, know the precise motive. It's quite reasonable to suppose that the first two murders were to, due to people knowing too much. Um, and I think all the costume was... And, and the strange messages and letters were, in my opinion, some way of obscuring the what was really going on. And then the final murder was had all the signs of being a hit. You know, it was a planned hit. A taxi driver murdered for some reason we don't know, but um, in no way was that any kind of sexual attack or or anything like that. It was just a taxi cab driver being being shot. Um, um, assassinated essentially um, he picked up um, okay so let's let's move on a little bit and actually start and I think he's actually more than a suspect I, I don't consider him a suspect I, I'm absolutely sure it was was Edwards um, um, the, 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 the Wikipedia article has, 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 has got all sorts of suspects, and it does actually mention here Edwards as being a suspect. Um, uh, it says, convicted serial killer Edward Edwards, who committed five murders between 1977 and 1996, was linked to the Zodiac murders and several other unsolved cases by former cold case detective John A. Cameron. Cameron. Cameron's theories were met with almost universal displaying disdain, especially from law enforcement. I'm not sure that's entirely true, um, because if we click on the actual Edward Edwards article, um, for example, um, if we look for De Garcia. Um, we'll see Detective Chad Darcy was, was the detective who essentially caught Edwards um, uh, he was in charge of the Sweet Park murders which is how Edwards was arrested and convicted um, so he, obviously he, 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 he got pretty familiar with Edwards and he has actually said he was pretty confident there are at least five to seven more murders Edwards committed and who knows beyond that? So he's not giving any limit on how many murders Edwards might have committed. 
Um, he gave a list of 15 concerned, confirmed and suspected victims and adding, adding that he was less sure that Edwards was involved in the Zodiac killings. So he's not saying that Edwards wasn't involved in the Zodiac killings. He's just saying he was more confident about some of these other murders. Um, it's interesting. I do not know the list of 15 confirmed and suspected victims that um, Detective Garcia came up with. Um, I'm not sure where that's published. Um, I ought to look into that sometime. Um, and, uh, okay, then it repeats that John Cameron speculated that Edwards' response for several hard cases, including Zodiac killings and the Bay Area cover and the murder of John Pinnett Ramsey. I'm not sure why that, that's been very cut down because the list of killings John Cameron has come up with um, is, is much more extensive than that. I mean, the Wikipedia article is, is, is mostly okay as far as I'm concerned but it, a huge amount more is known about Edwards than in, in this article and the one thing that I would say is definitely wrong in this article is it claims he was born in June the 14th 1933 um, this is wrong this was a fake identity Edwards adopted um, he wasn't born in 1933 he was actually born 1928 it's absolutely clear and we know that from his arrest records um, Otherwise, I don't have a problem with the Wikipedia article. I, mean, I've, uh, I probably contributed to it. I mean, it, it will be edited hundreds of times after that, so I don't know what's, what's in here. Um, at some point, I did edit in that he was born 1928, and somebody took that back out. Um, just to go into that, that little issue um, about when he was born, the reason we we pretty much know he was born as the first two times he was arrested his NKIT record so shows um, uh, 30th of May 1928 um, and it's only on his third arrest that that changes to the 14th of June 1933 um, and John Cameron had access to the NKIT records otherwise we would probably not really have any confirmation um, uh, and in fact, John Cameron didn't notice this until quite recently, 2019, I believe. Uh, um, um, so I think in the timeline, I actually make some sort of statement about that. Yeah, prior to October the 8th, 2019, so only less than two years ago, I, I believe that Edwards was born June the 14th, 1933. Um, and I... Um, I'll explain. It was actually Margaret Main that alerted to me that that was wrong, because she'd been told by Edwards that he got his he got his name off a tombstone, um, and what it appears happened is that he uh, he had a, a brother, or not a brother. His his aunt had a son, and his aunt adopted him, so it was sort of an adopted brother, adoptive brother, um, and I th I believe he died, and Edwards took on his identity and, and he was he was born on June the 30th well he was apparently born 1933 we haven't we don't know exactly when he's born but I imagine he was born that date um, okay moving on from that I want to really get back to the zodiac killer um, that I've got here because of that issue in the in the Wikipedia article um, okay let's just refer back to my what I was going to go through okay, we've done the basic facts on that. Um, we've gone through Wikipedia and fell on Edwards, John Cameron, Garcia. Um, so the next thing I want to go to is some of the evidence that s starts to link um, Edwards with the Zodiac Killer. Um, and I'm going to go to my website on Edwards here and go to 1968, the Zodiac Killer. Um, Okay, so I've, I've briefly resumed here. The Zodiac killings start on December the 28th, 1968. The killer targeted four men and three women between the ages of 16 and 29, with two of the men surviving attempted murder. Um, the Zodiac himself claimed to have killed up to 37 victims. Um, these are fairly widely accepted facts. Um, 
the killer originated the name Zodiac in a series of taunting letters sent to the local barrier paths, and that's just how I sum summarise it. And then I've also got a little timeline. I actually show here one detail is that different um, uh, guns were used. Um, uh, the first attack was a .22, the second attack was a 9mm, the third attack was a .45, well, he didn't actually use it, but he showed it to uh, to, this, to uh, Hartnell, the survivor, um, so that's how we know it was a .45, and then the fourth attack was a .38. I think that's it. that is slightly interesting, because again, that was maybe a, some kind of clue that it wasn't a typical serial killer, he wasn't using the same gun. Um, so that was maybe a clue that was something pretty odd going on um, in, in, in the undisputed evidence. Okay, um, what I want to go on to now is, um, is the Zodiac Killer Leeds article, because I think this is really pretty key, and this was, this was something that was found in Edwards's paper. I've got um, John Cameron's book, open here, it's actually page 68 um, of John Cameron's book. Uh, April had a box of Ed's personal papers. Towards the top I discovered an amazing article that's never surfaced before and it's this Zodiac Killer Leads article you can see on the screen. Um, it, uh, the article was, appeared on March the 20th, Sunday, March the 21st in the 1971 Akron Beacon Journal and it's really an absolutely key bit of evidence because John Cameron confirmed both with the journalist William Keziah and also Edwards's wife Kay that he was indeed the source. I mean it, even the article itself makes it pretty clear because it talks about the anonymous source being um, a 37 year old former convict and it all matches Edwards perfectly um, because uh, Edwards was in um, Deer Lodge Prison in Montana, and and it's all, he's also from Akron. Uh, so all the all the you know there were there were plenty of biographical details about Edwards. They omitted his name in the article, um, and I want to go a little bit. Uh, have I got a? I've got, um, uh, yeah, I think this is a link here to. No, that didn't work. That's a shame. Okay, let's go. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my Zodiac Killer Theories group because that's got the... That ought to be better linked up, but anyway. I'm going to go into the Zodiac Killer Theories group, which is where I've published quite a lot about Edwards. Um, Killer Leeds article. Okay, so I want to go through that in a little bit of detail. Because, um, okay, um, so I've already mentioned it was published March 22nd, 1971. Um, and it was the same day as the Zodiac Pines card was hand delivered in San Francisco. Um, and I believe that's very significant. And the Zodiac Pines card is also going to turn out to be extremely important. But, okay, let's first just go through what was known about this newspaper cutting found in Edwards' possession, for which he was the source. Okay, he was the 37-year-old cop former convict. Um, and basically, in this article, what Edwards did is accused someone called Richard of being the Zodiac Killer. For example, he says, when I saw his picture, I told my wife, what's that story about? I know that man, the former convict said. I'm sure I served time with him in Deer Lodge State Prison in Montana. So he's pointing to someone in Deer Lodge Prison, Montana. Um, and there was already a link to this because... Um, the killer at, at Lake Berryessa in September 1969 talked about Deer Lodge Prison. Um, he mentioned it to one of the survivors, Brian Hartnell. Um, 
before he tied them up and, and stabbed Hartnell seven times and, 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 uh, and the girl. So there was already this link to Deer Lodge. Um, and now we've got Edwards accusing someone called Richard. The, the, as far as we know, there was no person ever called Richard in Deer Lodge who matched, who matched the person that Edwards was describing. But what there was, was someone called Donald Lee Bujock, who is considered by some people to be a suspect. Um, but what's clear is that it's the reason for thinking that is there are some biographical details that match. Um, um, somewhere in the comments I go through that. I probably ought to put some of this out in, in more of an article rather than as Facebook comments. But here I ask the question, does it match any of the people in Deer Lodge? Um, you know, Richard was serving time for killing a sheriff, sheriff's deputy. Well, Donald Lee Bujock did indeed kill a, a sheriff's deputy. Um, on the other hand, Edwards claims he, that, 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 that this attack has swallowed bullets from the murder gun, which is just nonsense. Um, um, so here I say I don't think it matches Donald Lee Bujock, but in, fa in fact, um, and the story is also in Ed's auto autobiography. He, d he doesn't just put it in this n news report. Um, uh, it's also in Metamorphosis of, of a Criminal, his, uh, Edwards' his autobiography. Um, so he, an inmate who particularly stands out in my mind was the man who killed a sher deputy sheriff. Um, and he repeats the, biz, the, the story about swallowing bullets here. Um, and then he talks about this demented individual shows an overwhelming interest in science fiction and Egyptian literature. I suspect that's a lie. Um, and then he believed that anyone he killed would be a slave in the next life. And that was a Zodiac theme, because in the later Zodiac puzzles, um, one of which was decrypted, um, uh, you know, the decrypted text talks about slaves in the afterlife. Um, okay, so we've got Edwards, both in this news, newspaper article and in his own autobiography. Um, uh, apparently in his autobiography he doesn't talk about the name being Richard. Um, and it turns out that Bujot does look reasonably like the photo fits of the Zodiac killer that were made. Um, and in the article it says Richard worked as an auto mechanic, which, is, which matches Bujok, um, because Bujok worked on cars. Um, and I remarked that he does look a reasonable match to the composite photo of the Zodiac. Um, so Ed's suspect was pretty plausible. Um, so whether Edwards was seriously trying to frame Bu Donald Lee Bujok, I, I don't know. It's probably dubious, although some still can, you know, there's somebody who's apparently writing a, a book about Donald e. Lee Bujock being the suspect. So, I mean, whether that started with Edwards making an accusation, I mean, he's always been, you know, he was a pretty reasonable suspect. Um, okay, so that's one person that Edwards was accusing of being the Zodiac. Prison. And when you've got, I mean, it was false because the business about swallowing the bullets was nonsense. He wasn't called Richard. He was called Donald. So what were Edwards would have said if, if, if he was queried? We would have said I, either, oh, I'm not sure if that was the man or, oh, maybe it was Donald and someone told me about swallowing bullets. So he could have, you know, he, he couldn't have been proven to have made it up. Um, um, and there's some other details that are a bit nonsensical in the article because it turns out that the uh, um, the so-called decryption of the of the of, of the un, un, unsolved portion of the cipher was actually wrong. Um, in that, um, for a start, it's. It, the ciphertext is not correct. There's a missing H. It should be this. Um, 
Um, so so the, 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 the wheel light um, solution of the, 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 the last letters of the, of the, of the um, what's it, the 408 cipher is actually wrong. So, I mean, it, the article could have been dismissed as crazy and not plausible. So nobody was ever probably going to take it very seriously. Um, so in that sense, it, it would have been quite easily denied by Edwards. You know, he wouldn't have been taken very seriously. Um, and why would anyone necessarily suspect Edwards? I mean, it was still probably a risky step. And just to explain, what I think Edwards was doing is he was, he was generating misinformation and confusion. And that, I believe, is what the, the Zodiac Killer was about. And I've actually written an article which explains how um, there was all this... I mean, this, this, this Zodiac Killer Leeds article, when I say he's accusing Donald E. Bujok, I mean, he's accusing Richard or someone very similar to Donald E. Bujok in, in Montana prison. And, um, you know, uh, it's very clear Edward A. Edwards accused Richard at Deer Lodge prison of being, being the Zodiac whose biographical details match Bujok. He did murder a sheriff's deputy. He also worked as a car mechanic. He didn't swallow bullets. <laughs> um, and he's a fairly good resemblance to the drawing of the Zodiac made following the murder of Paul Stein. So it was a sort of pretty, you know, good sort of lead. Um, um, that, that links back to the, the Facebook group. Okay. Um, but it'll turn out that this wasn't the only person that Edwards accused of being the Zodiac. Now, the sources for these different false leads are, are diverse and, uh, and unclear. Um, there was Xenophon Anthony, who has been considered a suspect. Um, um, and Edwards, we're going to get on to this, Margot Burns, a witness who was terrorised by Edwards. Um, I'm going I'm to come back to her because I'm, at this point I'm not going to mention very much about her, but it turns out that Edwards accused Xenophon Anthony, who was a person that, who was close to the Stein murder. Um, and then there's possibly clues to Richard Gajkowski. Um, uh, this is a very widely supported theory. Um, I think it's mostly being promoted by um, someone called Tom, oh God, I've forgotten his second name, um, on the Zodiac Killer site. Um, uh, there appear to be clues that point to Richard Gajkowski. Whether they're intentional is a little bit hard to say, but some people believe there are clues in, 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 in the ciphers and letters pointing to Richard Gajkowski. Um, Donald Harden is a bit of a ridiculous one, but some people have suggested that DH in the bus bomb diagram was referencing Donald Harden, who actually solved the 408 cipher. I don't think anyone's ever been very serious about that. Um, and then there's one of the most interesting people in all this, which is Lawrence Klein. And there's a real mystery that I don't understand about Lawrence Klein because it's there's multiple clues um, that have a lot of which has been, come to light recently show that either Edwards was kept on accusing Lawrence Klein in different ways. Um, apparently, his fingerprints found at Lake, Larry, Lake Berryessa on the car there, where he sprayed a message, or where he wrote a message, um, actually matched Lawrence Klein. Um, and I believe Edwards would have planted those prints, if it's true that those prints match Lawrence Klein. I believe they, uh, from what I've been hearing, um, it's not exactly being verified, but um, in one of the Zodiac Killer groups, um, there's someone called Alex who, who has been saying there's all this evidence pointing at, uh, at Lawrence Klein. Um, I mean, he's been long considered some kind of suspect. Um, and there's one of the things Alex says is that scotch tape and the voice of Lawrence Klein were found at the scene of one of the Atlanta child killings. 
So the Atlantic child killings is a real mystery. Whether Lawrence Klein was really physically present there, whether Edwards was planting evidence to point at Klein, whether Klein was involved even in somehow back in 1947 in the Black Dahlia case, these are all questions which I don't have answers to. But Lawrence Klein is definitely a Im very important person um, within all this. Um, I know that Alex believes that Klein was the Zodiac Killer. I'm very sure he wasn't. It was Edwards, but he may have been involved in the Atlanta child killings. Um, and I believe Edwards was continually accusing Lawrence Klein of being the Zodiac. And it's another false lead. And then there's also the mystery of the Cheryl, Cheryl Joe Bates case. Well, I think the linkage was pretty weak, but it was in that Zodiac Killer Leeds article in which Edwards accused Donald E. Bujock. Um, so I believe Edwards was leaving pointers suggesting that the Cheryl Joe Bates case was, was the Zodiac Killer. I do not believe it was the Zodiac Killer. It might have been some kind of associate of Edwards. Maybe he knew who the killer was, or it might have been just basically an unrelated case that he he sort of adopted. I, I mean, I think I think one possibility is that Edwards sort of adopted the the killer of Cheryl Doe Bates, his identity. So he, he, you know, he he was this was something he did. He took on other people's identities. Um, you know. He took on the identity of his adopted brother to change his birth date. Um, Edwards was all about identity, pretending to be people who he wasn't. Um, you know, um, continually taking on other people's identity, claiming to be people who he wasn't. Um, and this sort of just runs through as an absolute theme. And then I've also put down Charles Manson. It's very clear that Edwards was linking Charles Manson into the whole thing. Quite why he was doing that, I'm still not sure. But it's, I think it's all to do with, it's something to do with MK Ultra. Um, whether he was implying Charles Manson was the Zodiac Killer is not so clear. But there are all these clues back to Charles Manson. Um, which we can we can we can we can look at um, those those will come up continually. Um, um, maybe he was suggesting it was Charles Manson, or maybe it was suggesting it was someone in the Manson family or a larger group. What it what I don't think that was exactly. It. I think Edwards was um, sort of linking the other case, and then there's a few other suspects here. George Hodel, I believe, was. I mean, he was a suspect in the Black Dahlia case in 1947, and I believe Edwards probably knew him. And um, he referred to him as Over the Hill Hodel. Um, he knew who he was. And I, I believe um, George Hodel was kind of involved to some extent in the Black Dahlia case. I don't for a minute believe that he, he actually killed Elizabeth Short. Um, I, Edwards confessed that he, he, he killed Elizabeth Short, and I, I believe that confession to be true. Um, and th that's a, another complex part of all this, which we will we'll come back to. So anyway, that's all the people that Edwards accused, um, or possibly accused. Um, so there's a pattern here, and the point is that he was accusing all these other people, and the whole theory is that he, uh, you know, it was the accuser that was the Zodiac, not the people being accused. Um, and there's a lot more to that um, uh, in, in various mysterious letters to do with Atlanta child killings and all sorts of things. Okay, so where have I got to in what I was going to do? Um, uh, okay, we've gone through we've gone through this. Um, okay, now I think it's probably time to introduce Margaret. Um, Margaret Main. Um, I mean, up to now, this was pretty much information that 
John Cameron found, and he published his book, and it's all in, in John Cameron's book, which is really essential to read if you want to fully understand everything that's known about Edwards, because John Cameron knows more about Edwards than anyone else, I believe, certainly than me, um, because my website, you know, although it's quite big, it doesn't cover everything that John Cameron dug up by no means. It's more like a sort of summary. Um, so, okay, so let's go back. Um, so let's, 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 let's start having a look at Margaret. Um, so now I'm going on to my own website on all this, um, uh, which is here, and the, the page about Margaret is here. Maybe I'll start at the, 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 the top of the website. I mean, this is the website I made about Edward Wayne Edwards, and um, uh, you know the most important cases are Elizabeth Short, the Black Daily, the Zodiac Killer, Theresa Halbach, and Lacey Peterson. I mean, those are just four cases that are part of the story and maybe the sort of key parts of the story um, for reasons that will become clear. Um, uh, and this is and this is Margaret here. Um, I think I've, I must have explained in the past that for, we, we decided to, to give her and change her first name. Um, although Margaret's a name she does use, um, but her normal um, formal name is Margaret, and uh, her second name is uh, her, her maiden name is Maine, but her married name was Burns. So some, quite often I refer to her as Margot Burns. Um, this dates back to a time when her, her Facebook account um, was a sort of secret. She didn't want to get loads of harassing messages or anything like that because uh, um, so we sort of slightly hid who she is. Um, but th then later on people figured out who, her Facebook account so it's not a secret any longer. Okay. Um, this is actually not quite true. She you know, says she contacted the, the author. She contacted me in August 2019. What actually happened is she was sending me messages before that, and there was enough in those messages that I should have been, I should have been asking more questions. But I just didn't quite understand what she was saying. I just thought she was theorising in some way, or someone had told her something. But I didn't realise that it was Edward Wayne Edwards who had actually been telling her. Um, what she was saying, so, you know, um, okay. Um, and as far as the Zodiac Killer is concerned, um, the thing to understand is, 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 is the timeline of, of Margaret. Um, uh, um, it really started uh, mid, uh, in, a, in around about January 1971, the really strange things. So there's a bit of background about Margaret. You know, um, but in January 1971, she was um, she was drugged and uh, taken off to a, a whorehouse. Um, and um, I'm not going to go then to that in detail, but this was the start of a s several months where she was... Um, um, I'm, I'm putting my notes. I mean, she was terrorised by the Gambinos in 1971. The details on the page. Um, uh, just to summarise it, she realised the Gambinos were too powerful and dangerous to not cooperate, so she cooperated with them. Um, you know, she had this experience of essentially being kidnapped. Um, she didn't really know what was happened. I, sh I haven't really explained that entirely. She. she, she you know, she just thought maybe she got drunk or something, but it, she, it wasn't. She didn't get drunk. She was drugged with some kind of date rape drugs or something like that. Um, and she's got, she has now recovered memories of, of a bit more of what happened um, um, in that initial incident. And then when she she was actually taken back to where she she was living, and then a few days later, when she, you know it was made clear to her that she was going to have to co cooperate with the Gambinos and she decided she would cooperate with them and she was going to do being you know do whatever they were saying um, and uh, the person who was obviously leading the well I say obviously it turns out that the person who was there um, directing everything was John Gotti 
Um, this was many years before he became famous. Um, there is a slight mystery in there that he was meant to still be in federal prison, and that's all a big part of the story about how um, uh, people were being led, let out of federal prison to do jobs for the FBI um, under Hoover. And we don't know the details of that, but I mean, maybe he wasn't out for that reason. Maybe he would just been sort of on some kind of early release work scheme and he wangled it somehow or other. But for whatever reason, he wasn't, although he ought to have been in, still in federal prison, as far as I can tell, in early 1971, he wasn't. He was, I'm not saying he was out all the time, but he was being let out at least for a day or two or a week or something, and then he would have been back in the prison. Um, uh, because, you know, he would appear and then he would be driven somewhere and presumably to go back to report back to federal prison or something along those lines. Um, and it, it's certainly a reason to doubt Margaret's story, but she's, I mean, it's impossible that it was anyone other than John Gotti. And he told her his life story. He had you know, uh, for all sorts of reasons, it's very clear it was him. Um, okay, now I want to go on to the Pines card because the Pines card is really important because it really shows us that Margaret's story is is true. Um, and when she contacted me, one one of the things that she started to explain is 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 the Pines card. Um, so back to the, the, the page here, I'm going to do a little bit of explanation about the Pines Card. The Pines Card. Um, this is the Zodiac Pines Card. Um, it was sent, it was prepared on the 19th of 20th of March 1971, and it was I, sh I say it was sent, it was hand-delivered to the San Francisco Chronicle on March the 22nd, 1971. And this is the same date that the Zodiac Killer Leeds article was published. So you've got this enormous coincidence between the Zodiac Pines card and the Zodiac Killer Leeds article. And I believe the reason for that would have been that Edwards was making sure he had an, an alibi to be back in Akron, Ohio, doing this false accusation of Richard at the same time as which the Zodiac Pines card was being delivered to the San Francisco Chronicle on the West Coast, sort of proving that he couldn't have delivered it. So obviously what happened is that Edwards got someone else to deliver it. I believe it was one of the Gambinas, in fact. I think it may have been John Gossie did it personally, but no, or he got someone to do it. I'm not actually sure about that. Um, um, but the point is that Margaret remembers making the Pines card. Um, she had to help Edwards. She, she was using a hole punch to make the edge serrated. So she was handling it considerably. Um, and, and Edwards explained to her some of the clues in the Pines card. What, you know, because you've got these strange pointers. First of all, we've got Sierra Club. Sierra Club. I mentioned the link to the Charles Manson. Now, that is an obscure link because Charles Manson was actually in the Sierra Club. It was a sort of environmental group that um, was actually active nationwide, but I think it was centred in San Francisco, headquartered in San Francisco. Um, so that's one obscure pointer there. And then here we've got a round in the snow, upside down. Um, and then roughly in the middle of these two pointers, which kind of s suggest a kind of circulating pattern anyway, because you've got, you know, you've got sort of upside down here, so you've potentially got a, an act a rotation going out. And, and right in, or pretty much in the middle here, you've got this little thing, which is a, a snow, well, Edwards claimed it was a snow-covered wagon. I mean, when you look at it, maybe it was a snow-covered wagon. It's a little bit difficult to be absolutely sure about what it really was. Um, but maybe maybe the artist did intend it to be a stove. You can see little figures in the in the in the drawing. This this is a drawing, so 
you've got three figures here and they're wandering around and yeah that could be a snow covered wagon i'm not sure whether it was or not but anyway that's what edwards claimed it was um and the reason he claimed it was is because it being a wagon um the whole clue is meant to be that there's a wagon and we've got rotation in other words around rotation and these pointers suggesting rotation um and 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 charles's wayne is 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 the constellation you know normally known as either the plow or the um the big dipper um you know it's probably the most well-known constellation in the sky and it points at the pole star so you know it it, it's got pointers like these are sort of pointers that's a pointer that's a pointer um and um and the big clue in it you know probably the biggest clue in, in the pines card is is about this and it's it's uh, i've actually posted recently about something else which i believe is is in there so i'm going to go very briefly through that because it's a recent post here um yeah, what I'm trying to explain here is how a round in the snow by itself could be interpreted as wagon in the snow. Because if you take a round in the snow and look at it as a sort of ticker tape and then shift the W to the front, so the W is in the front, then you get WA in the snow, WA in the snow. Um, which when you regroup the letters you've got wane in the snow I, well you if, if you take you have to take out a, a round so you take out the keyword you take out the keyword round because i mean that's you know, it's a bit like doing a crossword clue round is sort of saying everything's going round like a ticker tape and then so you take that out and what you're left with you're left with wane in the snow, wane in the snow, wane in the snow. I think it, so I'm saying, I think that's a clue that there's a wagon in the snow and that's the whole point about the Pines card. Um, uh, because Edwards explained it is a wagon in the snow um, and, and, and it's going around and that means this constellation, Charles's wane, because Charles wane, Charles's wane, I mean, let's just double check, that's probably linked to Wikipedia. Yeah, Charles's wane, um, is the Big Dipper. <laughs> um, there's no doubt about this. And it's all to do with also Charlemagne. And, and Edwards also explained to Margaret, and this is important, how he was a paladin and he talked about the TV show, um, uh, I'm going to check, oh, Have Gone With Travel. Paladin is the leading character in Have Gone With Travel. Um, and um, Charlemagne, which is to do with Charles, Charles's Wayne, um, uh, ha, you know, it, it, his whole story involves twelve paladins, um, and again, there's more symbolism here because the zodiac has twelve symbols. There are twelve paladins. It it, it all goes back to the twelve, you know, uh, twelve knights of, of King Arthur's Round Table as well. It's all sort of medieval. Um, stories. Um, I think you know, they're, they're probably mostly mythical, but you know, obviously Charlemagne was a historical character. Um, I mean, uh, and I mean, obviously, with Edwards being named Charles, um, you know, he would have been interested in Charlemagne. Um, I mean, Charles the Great was definitely a real person. <laughs> he was King of the Franks. I didn't realise it was quite that long ago, from around 70, you know, a long time ago, 70, 768, 774, so, yeah, um, a, a, a long time ago, um, you know, when the, the Romans were, you know, he was oh, Emperor of the Romans, Holy Roman Emperor, I didn't even realise he was a, you know, I don't know what he was, really interesting historical figure, but the, but the point is, um, if we look for Paladin here, Paladin, oh, Paladin, yeah, I mean he was the historical counter with with 12 Paladins, and these are sort of like knights, 
Um, these are analogous to, in the Spart, the myth of the Knights of the Round Table of St. King Arthur's Court. So it's all, you know, whether he really had 12 paladins, I don't know, this is a little bit mythical. But there are all these stories that are... Geoffrey uh, of Monmouth based his stories of Arthur largely on stories of Charlemagne. So he, he predates, I, I explained that wrong, he predates, really, King Arthur. Um, how much of it is myth and how much of it is true. But anyway... Um, Edwards regarded himself as a paladin. Um, um, I mean, we can also have a look at Hagan will travel. Um, this was a, a sort of Western um, TV series um, that I'm sure Edwards was saw and was probably addicted to, or, you know, <laughs> I'm sure... Edwards identified with it, and the lead character was Richard Boone, who was Paladin. Um, and uh, that's perhaps enough about that, but, you know, it says here, this series follows the adventure of a man calling himself Paladin, played by Richard Boone on television and voiced by John Dino on radio, taking his name from the foremost knights in Charlemagne's court. So, you know, it's all linked together. The link, so you're here in Wikipedia, I haven't put this in. Um, and, and, and he's a sort of hard, hard killer, which is, well, I don't know if he killed people, but he, 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 he was a bit like a hitman. Or, or, I don't know if he was actually a hitman. He was more sort of, you know, a good guy. But he, he uh, and, and you can see here, have gone with travel and his symbol is a, a knight chess piece. And I think that probably also goes to explain why in the recently decoded cipher is an, involves a knight's move. Um, and there's more clues in that that I, I could, could try and go into. Um, how long is my video now? Is it going on a long time? Probably. I don't know. Yeah, we're getting up nearly to an hour. Um, Okay, so I, I, uh, let me go back to my original plan, what else I was going to talk about. I was talking about Have Gun Will Travel on the Paladin. Um, okay, I think I'm probably going to skip this bit about where Edwards might have got his information. He, talk, he did talk about almanacs, um, and I think particularly Poor Richard's almanac. Um, um, okay, so I'm, I'm going to skip over that. I'm not sure there's very, anything very definite in that, but I, I think Edwards was reading about people like Charlemagne somewhere, and I think it may well have been in almanacs or similar sort of popular history books. Um, um, okay, and then finally, I just want to talk about the slightly bigger picture. I mean, we've already mentioned, I was going to bring in these other cases, but we've, 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 we've had Margaret. I haven't mentioned... I mean, Edwards told Margaret his entire life story and made numerous confessions to her, and I'm not going to go through all those. And he also explained, for example, how one of the Zodiac letters meant that he was God. Um, and you can, you can read all about that here on the Pines Card Witness page. Um, you know, here's, here's the bleeding knife of the Zodiac, um, which is a backwards dog, dog tail. Um, and Margaret's just sent me a message. So I think she's watching this live. She's saying Farmer's Almanac too. Yeah, so maybe it was the Farmer's Almanac. Maybe it was Paul Richard's Almanac. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, Margaret. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just now going to finally go on um, to explain how there's these other sources. I mean, that John Cameron didn't, I think, know about. Um, we've got the... I killed Lacey... Well, he, well, John Cameron did know about the Black Daily website. Okay, I just want to talk... Let's talk a little bit about the Black Daily website. Now, I strongly believe that Edwards must have... There's this absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy website about the Black Dahlia case in 1947, Elizabeth Short. Um, now, first of all, to say is Edwards did confess to this murder. He described how he did it in detail um, to Margaret, and the details are um, just horrifying and she doesn't even really want to talk about it. Um, but um, sometime, I'm not sure exactly when, but uh, you know, around about 2000 or so, 
2000, 2003, round about the time of the, you know, the Lacey Peterson case, um, there's this mysterious website, Black Dahlia Solution, which is all about the Black Dahlia case and is absolutely crazy and it doesn't make sense, but it's what I believe it is, is I believe it's Edwards making, it's not the truth, he doesn't confess to being the Black Dahlia, but he makes this strange website which claims that Ed Burns was the, killed, killed the Black Dahlia and committed suicide. And, and what's true is that there was a suicide note left on the beach um, in 1947. And, and, I mean, this page of the Black Dahlia Solution here on this crazy website claims that Ed Burns is, is oh, it's not working, but... Uh, why is that not working? I don't understand why that link's not working. Mm. Oh well, that's strange. I think the Black Daily website is working to some extent. Um, uh, and, but I mean, I've posted recently about the... Um, I've just lost my thread here. Black Dahlia website. Um, I left a comment here about how this, this clue Bringo was also a reference to Charles Manson um, and how Edwards had a collection of heads that he showed Margaret. There's all these other things. And the, the, I mean, that's another thing that Margaret knows the Tim Holt comic, comic books, which is also really pretty interesting because that's something she was shown and how on earth could she have ever spotted i don't think anyone would ever have spotted this clue in a comic um there's this comic which people had linked to the zodiac killer you know very clever people had noticed that there was this common theme about um you know to the, the linking to red mask and this comic um it was by head friend Hartman, and Ed said he actually did the inking anonymously. He was a ghost inker, and he he says he points out that he left his name, I'm Ed, in this comic book um, as a clue, and Margaret was shown this. And I don't believe that, you know, it's a fact that it's there, and you know who could have actually discovered this unless they were told. Um, so that's you know that's pretty important. Um, um, you know, he, he, he explained how I made is on the pants and sleeve of Red Mask, and there's even more details about that. Um, and it was all linked to do with comics and Fred Harmon, who, you know, it's clear Edwards knew these people. It was all to do with westerns, Red Rider, comics and comic strips about it and and stuff like this he was he was involved in it um it and margaret's been explaining to me how the comics were important and they had clues in them um uh you know i'm not suggesting that i'm not suggesting that fred Harmon was you know, in the Mafia or anything, maybe he was, but I'm not really suggesting that. I'm suggesting that Edwards was associating with people in Hollywood, in 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 the comic business somehow. Um, you know, unfortunately, we can't back all this up, but it's a fact that 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 that, that I made is on the sleeve of Red Mask, um, and there's there's lots of lots and lots of mysteries in there. Um, uh, just to get back on topic. Oh yeah, well I was sort of I was going to be talking about the the Black Daily website is just crazy, but um, it's got these clues in it that relate to the Lacey Peterson case, um, and I mean it it also references the it, it's all about encryptions and it, the Zodiac Killer um, comes up in 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 the website. Um, um, Going back to the site map, I mean, there's all sorts of things about how the the, the I mean, we've also talked about. He claimed it, 
the website claims that Ed Burns left us, you know, I mean, it's true that, that, that there was this suicide left, no, left on the beach. I mean, if you go to the Black Dahlia case, Um, and look for suicide. Uh, yeah, on March the 14th, an apparent suicide note scrawled on a bit of paper was found tucked in the shoe in a pile of men's clothing on the ocean's edge at the foot of Breeze Avenue, Venice. Um, um, uh, Los Angeles. And this is what the note read, to whom it goes, I've waited for these catch me from the back daily account, but have not. I'm too much of a cow to turn myself in. The best way out for me, I couldn't help myself with it. Sorry, Mary. So there was this mysterious, apparent suicide by the killer. But I don't think anyone believes that was real. That was, a, that was fate. Well, maybe some people believe it was real. I mean, that was presumed the intention, you know, to make a false con confession that led nowhere. Um, uh, so that was a strange, mysterious event in that case, which is pretty typical of Edwards. And then in, in, in the Black Dahlia site, um, it, you know, the, the, the author recovers Ed Burns out of this and claims that the killer was Ed Burns. And it's all just nonsense. But there's these other clues in here. It's got all sorts of things like Ed did not main, make his serial brainchild for the general public. I mean, he, he's, the person is called Ed. And then things like why a rabbit cannot have rings. Uh, this explains the, you know, the, the murder scene. But then there's this most fascinating clue right at the end of the website, or almost at the end of the website, where it says in the web page, Eddie Rabbit was running and the FBI was not going to chase him. And the point is that Eddie Rabbit would have been Edwards's identity in the Lacey Peterson case. Um, because Edwards associated, um, I'm really struggling to sort of even put this into words, but if we go, okay, go back to the top somehow, um, Edwards told Margaret, um, um, It's, it's all to do with the Eddie Rabbit song, Every Which Way But Loose. Um, yeah, so, turned her Every Which Way But Loose. Ed said those words to me about Lacey. Um, and Edwards was, 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 was trying to fix her memories by associating them with, with songs and clues. Um, there's a lot more to this. There's at least half a dozen to a dozen songs that he used to fix different memories. Um, and um, Turn to Her Every Which Way Loose is a song by Eddie Rabbit. Um, and this was just one of his song clues that he would use. And I feel that this clue, Eddie Rabbit was running from the FBI and was not going to chase him, is a clue about the fact that Edwards did jobs for the FBI, and I strongly believe that um, because of that, they do not want the truth about Edwards to be known, um, because it's just embarrassing um, that someone that Edgar Hoover was using to kill people which in itself is, you know, obviously well, very dubious, legally speaking. Um, 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 you know, Edwards gave all these clues that he, he, he knew Edgar Hoover. I mean, there was another witness who was actually told, um, this other witness who was actually who was sort of terrorised by Edwards. Um, and when, when Edwards was terrorising her, you know, Edgar was quite impressed with him, is what Edwards told Margie Morrison. 
this was when she was a small girl and Nixon was president. Um, and the telephone repairman told my father her phone had been bugged, so they were being targeted. They, 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 they were, you know, they were being targeted because um, her father was the business agent for a carpenters union. This was probably illegal. Um, it wasn't the last time my dad and his union friends would be spied on. We lived in the south, um, and um, Edwards was being sent by. Hoover or the FBI or someone in government to make life difficult for her and when she tried to um, when she tried to report him you know it, it was just stonewalled it was ignored almost certainly because Edwards was an informant for the FBI um, and not just an informant in the sense of providing information he was actually actively doing jobs for them including, I believe, killings. And that might sound extraordinary, but when you, when you look at things like COINTELPRO, um, you will find out that, you know, it's, it's well known that the United States government was interfering in domestic American political organisations, such as unions, um, things like Black Power, but I don't believe this is this is you know it's it's anything that was deemed to be subversive or possibly subversive, um, including feminist organisations, anything remotely communist, and I believe that possibly refers to Charles Manson. I mean, well, I mean Charles Manson wasn't a communist, but he was, um, you know, the anti-Vietnam War is you know was all about the hippies and all that sort of stuff, and I believe that may be where how Charles Manson comes into it. Um, and, and Edwards was hinting this is kind of what it was all about. Um, FBI Director Jeg, who issued Director to Govern Coyote Pro, um, ordering FBI agents to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the activities of these movements. And I believe that actually went up to murder. Um, uh, I mean, you know. Whoops. Typed it for murder. Um, you know, there was the, the murder of Malcolm X, which I know nothing about, but FBI spokesman has denied the FBI was directly involved in Malcolm's murder. Yeah, but I think the point is that you would have people like Edwards who were, who were given a mission of disrupting people, and yeah, they may not have been told they could kill to do it, but they interpreted it in their own way um, and um, what Margaret believes is that when she was with Edwards in 1971 and the Gambinos they were targeting um, a political group called the Brown Berets um, and so it turns out extraordinarily that the Zodiac Killer was intimately involved with the FBI and organized crime in the form of the Gambino crime family. And all of this is obviously not 100% clear quite who knew what, you know, what did Hoover know, who knows. But these were, there were all these deep connections between um, things like the Nixon administration, the Gambino crime family. Um, which I, I do try to explain in more detail here, um, and activities that were going on concurrently um, against groups like the Brown Berries. Um, and this is what Edwards and Gotti were working on in early 1971, because that's when... Um, uh, that's that. That's when they framed, I believe. Um, go to the wrong full I've forgotten his name just right now. They framed Joan Corona for murders of twenty-five migrant farm workers, and I mean, with all the sorts of things Edwards would do, that he that he left clues in the graves, pointing to Joan Corona 
or, or Edwards. I mean, I don't know if it was Edwards that did it or other Gambinos, but it was all an operation by, I believe, the Gambinos and, and Edwards to um, to attack the brown berries, um, um, discredit them by, you know, framing Juan Corona and basically terrorise them to the extent that they did, in fact, um, disband. Um, I mean, he called Juan Corona Ricky Ricardo for some reason and said he was going to steamroll him, in other words, frame him. Um, I mean, Margaret doesn't have clear memories of this, but Edwards talked to me about the brain Brayers. They told me they were working on Cesar Chavez, um, and it was all to do with causing a rift between the Hispanics and the general population. It was all connected. Um, so, I mean, you know, she wasn't told a great deal, but, she, you know, this is what was going on. Um, and this is, you know, all a, all a part of it. And, and this was going on while the, you know, shortly after the Zodiac killings happened. Um, okay. Um, have I, oh, the last thing that I haven't covered yet is the Lacey, I killed Lacey Peace and Messages. So this is another source. Um, how am I going to get to this? Um, the point is that... Um, There were, um, in the Lacey Peterson case, which is where I really came, came into all of this, because I'd, back in 2013, I'd already sort of figured out that Scott Peterson didn't kill his pregnant wife, Lacey Peterson, and something else happened. Um, and, uh, John Cameron actually found this. It's not in his book, but the the first clue was was back on um, the fourth of May, two thousand three, um, um, which is a bit of an interesting date because five is E and four is D, so maybe that was a little clue already that it was Ed, and there was this mysterious message from God, and then after that, that was basically a confession that. I believe from Edwards that he he uh, framed Scott Peterson. It says, I delivered the evidence to secure the arrest of Scott Peterson. In other words, planted the bodies. And the conviction, in other words, it, yeah. So this is Edwards gloating about how he framed Scott Peterson. And then there was all these other messages. That's the reverse side of the message from God. Um, and then there's all these other messages which I've which I've blogged about, there's a dump of them there, but they talk about the Zodiac Killer quite a lot. Um, um, there's another one with a clue to his identity, which I believe decodes to Edward E. Um, that's one of the I Killed Lacey Peterson messages. And then even beyond that, um, there are other clues, I believe, in the I Kill Lacey Peterson cases that tie all together. Um, and it's very clear to me that Edwards was the author of those messages. Um, so, uh, where shall I talk? Okay, I think I'd talk about them in my personal blog, so I'm going to go to here. Um, so, I believe they don't just refer to the Lacey Peterson case. Okay, so. Here's, here's, here's an article I wrote about the I Kill Lacey Peterson messages. Um, I mean, he out, I mean, obviously, the, just the name, obviously, is a confession I killed Lacey Peterson in itself. So, you know, who was writing these strange messages um, is really sort of the question. I mean, and somebody was confessing to doing it. And, you know, there are, there are, there are, they're, they're written as sort of riddles, but you can, you can try and in, infer some meaning from them. And he was saying that Lacey was not abducted in the park. Um, apparently she answered the door, so she was conned somehow and pushed the floor. Maybe that's how it was done. Um, he also talks about, okay, for there to be the perfect crime, there must be another to do the crime. So as if for the murder to be perfect, I have to frame an innocent person. This is sort of part of his thinking. He, he liked to frame innocent people for some reason. Now, I think it's all to do with kind of headhunting and this idea that 
you can sort of gather slaves for the afterlife, some kind of strange satanic thinking, possibly. Um, and there's there's other stuff in in these these messages about A.C. Peterson, which you know some so it's, they're hard to interpret, but he also appears to claim that he let the dog out, and that would have been to a misdirection um, in the case. So there's all these I killed A.C. Peterson cases. And, and then what's also interesting about them, and we haven't talked about the Theresa Halbach case at all, but the I killed Lacey Peterson cases messages also come into the Theresa Halbach case because it's clear to me that um, from the timing of these various messages, um, in October, October the 11th, 2005, I killed Lacey Peterson says, thus in the of days I will return to my old ways read the paper it will happen sooner than later so he's given notice that there's going to be a high profile mo murder reported by newspapers um, um, bear in mind that Theresa Halbach disappeared October the 31st 2005 so this was what 20 days beforehand um, talks about in a matter of days so presumably less than a month um, and then he talks about if you have my number, you enter a permanent slumber. So maybe, who knows? Well, who knows what that really meant? But I don't know what it meant. Um, um, and then he he reiterates that he's leaving, returning to his previous ways. So he's going to murder someone else. And then on the um. As the waters become cool, I seek out someone new. He's going to do another murder, and then Sunday, the October October the thirtieth, two thousand and five. So, on the eve of Theresa Halbach's murder, there he publishes this cryptogram that nobody's really managed to decode. Um, there is somebody who's called Rubber Ducky who's who's published a YouTube video on it um, with some interpretation of it and um, I think it's got some merit um, whether she's entirely got to the bottom of it I don't know um, but and then it claims that this code is somehow where Edwards is based or his home address or um, who knows what it meant and then shortly afterwards he says for thou say what I do shocks the world, I laugh at thee, so seek a woman with a man and earl. So, Earl was Stephen Avery's brother, and I believe this is linking into. Margaret, about this case, um, I've got these messages. Um, from her about the Therese Halbeck case. Um, it's some, something about Therese Halbeck. I told you in the past. Um, it told me the car was parked under a big evergreen tree at the camp for a while. It could be seen from the air during the search because of the green colour of the car. Um, and there's these messages about how the car was brought, brought onto the Avery property. I'm not going to go into those in detail. But then here, Ed wouldn't have moved the car himself unless you think he was calling himself an idiot. He was talking about the person who put the car on the salvage yards. I mean, it's all clear that Edwards explained that the car was put in the salvage yard, um, which if you know what um, Catherine Zellner's discovered about the, the Theresa Halbach case, it, it was all to do with how Stephen Avery was framed and they brought the car back onto the Avery property. Um, Okay, so I think I have now, to some extent at least, covered the the I killed AC pieces and messages. Um, and so, I think that's probably where I'm going to bring this video to an end. I could go on talking about Edwards all day because, you know, if you look at all the cases he's doing, you couldn't possibly you couldn't possibly talk about them. Um, you know, there's, there's a timeline here, and even this is nothing compared to what is on John Cameron's timeline. You know, I've got, I've sort of chosen cases selectively, um, and, you know, well-proven events about, you know, when he was arrested, 
when he was on the FBI's most wanted fugitive list. Um, I mean, uh, this, 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 sometime around here is, 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 is when he really started getting involved with the FBI. Um, probably because they recruited him. I mean, they realised he was a smart person. Um, they gave him a, you know, a choice. You cooperate with us, do things for us, or you're not going to get out of prison. So this is the informant game. Um, and in particular on that, I mean, is, is, the, is the murder of, of Jack Parsons in uh, June, 1950, June 1952. I mean, that's kind of, um, that's why this gets so political, because obviously, I think it's, ob it's obvious to me that if he was murdered, it was, it was because he was suspected of being a, of defecting. He was a rocket scientist for national security reasons. Um, he believed he was, you know, there was suspicion he was spying for the Israeli government. Um, he believed he was, he was being sp spied on by the FBI. And then suddenly he, he dies in a huge explosion. Um, I believe that hit would have been ordered by Hoover or someone high up in um, and I believe that Edwards would have been let out of prison to go and do that murder because if you look at the timeline um, uh, when was Jack Parsons that was um, June 1952 now if we look at the timeline um, in 1952 in April he was sentenced to federal prison for impersonating a interstate transportation of a stolen car. So, you know, this this matches. Um, you know, he, he, in April he's 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 meant to be in federal prison, and in June, I believe he was let out to kill um, for the government, basically. Um, which is why, you know, the FBI is never going to want to talk about this because it's just obviously extremely scandalous. Um, and I'm sure they have a policy of not disclosing information about their informants for obvious reasons. You know, they want informants to, to believe they're going to keep their secrets to whatever extent they can. Obviously, they can't prevent one of their informants being prosecuted at state level or even I suppose at federal level come to that if, if you know if, if they get caught but they're not going to disclose their file on Edwards if they can possibly help it um, and I'm sure they must have a file on him um, you know they must have been aware um, of, what, of what he was done I and mean, whether the papers were all destroyed when Edgar Hoover died there was certainly a a suggestion that there was personal files that Edgar Hoover had that were destroyed um, on his death. Um, maybe I'm starting to wrap it on, but you can see this huge timeline. What a complex life Edwards have working both for the FBI and the Gambinos, and who knows what else, and besides committing various murders on his own account. Um, I haven't even talked about Stephanie Bryan, but that's a very key case. Um, um, we don't know exactly. That was some kind of hit for probably to discredit students, I think. But I don't even know. Um, but Nabbitt was a student who was convicted of that murder and, and executed. Um, he was an accounting student at the University of California, Berkeley. So, I mean, if you wanted, you know... <laughs> You know, in, during the era of the Vietnam War, you know, the protests would have been centred with these students. And if you could discredit them somehow or other, that maybe was the job, discredit students at the University of California, Berkeley. And Edwards interpreted that as, uh, or someone interpreted that as, as committing a murder and framing a student for it. Um, I mean, he, he he said he didn't even want to do that murder, but it was a, a, a job. 
Um, that's what Margaret was told. Um, go back to just briefly to to that murder because it's so important. Um, Um, I mean, this was the whole reason why Margaret Ch contacted J James, not James Cameron, John Cameron. Um, um, he murdered forty. She, she was a fourteen-year-old murdered, April twenty-eighth, nineteen fifty-five, or that was when she was last seen. Um, and Burton Ab Abbott was executed for it, and. There's these clues that Edwards called himself Leroy Myers because he he got um, I haven't talked about this but he got uh, a journalist who was closely associated with Nixon um, to find the body. Um, um, I mean you can see in here um, Ed Montgomery was the photographer. Oh, Ed Montgomery was the journalist. There was also a photographer there, Bob Bryant. Um, Monroe Coleman, who Bob Bryant was, when he was one of the family, um, and they found the body um, because Edwards had already planted it there. And there's clues that corroborate that Edwards, uh, this confession, he told Margaret she was not killed for parts of three days, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, um, fragments of green cloth were sticking out of the ground so he could remember exactly where the body was buried. I mean, he needed to obviously lead others to it. It was buried under a tumbleweed bush. Um, Stephanie Bryan had saddle shoes, and there was an also an anonymous letter to do with this called the Melody Letter, um, which would have been sent by Edwards or associates. Um, and he said he didn't want to do it, but it was a job. So. Um, um, so it's clear that was that was an ordered hit for some some kind of political motive. Um, so again, this was an absolute. This is an absolute scandal. He um, murdered a fourteen-year-old, framed Burton Abbott for it, and it was apparently for some political political motive, um, he talked, he, the, 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 the term he used was social construction. It was to make a, some sort of political message. Um, and I think it was all to do probably the Vietnam War protests and what the government wanted doing and, um, and maybe Charles Manson was a, a, for a similar reason to discredit I don't know, sort of the hippie movement or left-wing students, uh, places like San Francisco, Berkeley, um, um, to you know discredit or or make people think again, abandon the hippie lifestyle or the drugs, which I mean may be a good thing, but um, there are all these clues that. There was a political element to some of what Edwards was doing. Um, okay, and we've sort of okay, yeah, we've finished. We've finished here with Edwards said to Mark about Lacey turned her every which way, but leaves the title of a 1972 song by Eddie Rabbit. Apparently, a clue is the alias Edwards was using. Um, and Margaret just sent me a message there. Um, um, maybe I'll just look at her comments that she's been sending me while all this has been going on. Um, Farmers Ammon to part of stopping the death penalty. Yeah, obviously the Gambinos were against the death penalty because they didn't want people like, you know, they didn't want their people like John Gotti, Carlos Gambino, their heads of the crime family to be executed. Um, Carol Chessman, Barbara Graham and Burton Abbott were all executed as part of trying to stop the death penalty and there were movies made to influence the public yeah so it was all some kind of propaganda um, um, social construction manipulation of public opinion 
that was going on. Um, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a little strange to talk about it now because, I mean, I'm opposed personally to the death penalty, so I'm sort of agreeing with Edwards and the Gambinos, um, which is a strange position to be in, but I think in a, in a strange way, that's kind of what part of this is all about. Um, you know, do we want the death penalty? People can be framed. You can execute innocent people. Um, and uh, that was maybe part of what was, it was all about. Three places, cases Margaret mentioned and Ed Montgomery was in charge of publicising and putting out this message. And even, you know, whether, whether that was anything to do with why Lacey Peason was murdered, I doubt it, but maybe that was sort of the point. Um, I, I don't know, I don't think Lacey Peterson was to do with that, but never the fact, Scott, has, Scott Peterson has been on death row, and um, uh, it's looking now like, well, the, the death penalty has been dropped, and it's looking like he's now going to get a, a new trial, and at the end of June there will be hearings to determine whether that is the case. And with that, I'm going to stop sharing in the video.